Hey guys, Bruce here with DIY Homestead Projects. I'm making this video as a follow-up to my previous video about this uh, circuit combiner that I built and made a whole video showing you how I did it. And uh, that video has gained some traction and hit some magical, uh, some magical uh, code or something with the uh, YouTube algorithm, and and it's getting quite a bit of attention. So I figured I'd make this video and I want to address some of the questions, concerns, and safety concerns for anybody out there that's watched that video. Hopefully, you know, this video will pop up and you'll see it too. And maybe not. Heck, I don't know. I don't understand how all that works. But the main reason I made that video is because I had a specific situation where I needed 220 in my shop. I've moved to a new shop, as you could tell. I haven't got it put together obviously I just just moved in here everything I own is still in boxes and uh, I'm far from being a operational shop so let me first off start by saying that I am NOT a certified electrician I don't have a background in electrical and I you know I'm just an average guy that did my own research and figured out how to put this thing together so as a disclaimer, uh, this really should go without saying. Uh, people watch a YouTube video and think that they can make something that they saw on, on, the, on the internet and use it and, and it'll work for them just as it did for the person that made it. And that's not necessarily true. Most people will probably realize this and do their own research before they start messing around with electricity and just to let you know if you didn't already know and this has been brought to my attention by probably hundreds of people in in the comment section of that particular video where I showed how to build this device that uh, electricity is dangerous and you should really think twice before you start messing around with it if you don't know what you're doing I'm not saying I know what I'm doing I think I tried to make that obvious in my first video that I don't have any uh, background or whatever. So if you're going to try something like this or use that, that uh, video as an inspiration, do your research, check up on uh, all of that stuff and, 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 you know, ultimately you're responsible for your own actions. Anyway, so we got that out of the way. <clears throat> I did get a lot of comments on that video by uh, 30 and 40 year certified electricians with zero subscribers and no content. So I'm sure that, uh, I mean, they used a lot of name calling, called me all kinds of stuff, every name in the book. I'm, I'm sure that uh, those are legitimate um, certified electricians with all kinds of industrial electrical experience and, and what they say is, I'm sure, true. So. Take that for what it's worth as well. Um, I do appreciate the comments. I, I did learn a lot by reading through some of those comments that uh, you guys have put on that particular video. And there's a couple of things I want to address that I didn't cover in the video. Again, because I am not a, an electrician, so I, you know, I'm just a tinkerer. And I know, I know, people are gonna hammer me in the comment section of this video also, and that's, that's fine. That's what YouTube is all about, right? All the uh, highly qualified people of the world will police the internet and make sure everybody stays safe and nobody does anything ridiculous. And we appreciate that. So a couple of things to address. First off, this device uses two 120 or 110 volt outlets. It cannot be just any two outlets. Uh, if some of you are thinking that you can just use any two outlets, that's not the case. Uh, this is where your research comes into play. In a circuit box or breaker box, it's fed generally by two, or the one I had in that particular 100 year old shed or a garage that I was using this in, 
The left side is fed by a 120 volt line that comes from the power pole and the other and the right side is fed by a completely separate or a different phase 110 or 120 volt line. So the two outlets that you use have to be on different phases. One side is a phase and the other side is a phase. Generally what you need is two outlets or two uh, circuits two single pole breakers that are right next to each other. One will be fed from the right phase and one will be fed from the left phase. And I have no idea if that's the correct terminology for that, but that's the best way I could go about explaining it. <clears throat> if you use two 110 outlets or 120 volt outlets that are on the same phase, it's not gonna work. You're gonna end up with 110 volts and probably not even that because it won't be wired correctly for that application. So anyway, that's why I can't stress enough that you do your own research and, and uh, understand. I, I've done enough to where I have enough knowledge to be able to put something like this together. Is it safe? Probably not. Did it work for me in my particular situation and get me through a bind? Yes. Um, I've been able to do it successfully doesn't mean that it's going to work for you. So let me just throw that out there. Um, second problem with this device that I built, and this has been pointed out to me by many, many people in the comments, and I did not cover it in my original video. Those two breakers, if you're using single pole breakers like I did with this device, those breaker switches should be tied together with a bar so that if one breaker pops, the other breaker pops, and all of the power going into this device has been shut off. So there's not any problems with that. So keep that in mind. If you have one circuit breaker pop and the other one does not, you could be shocked. It could be fatal. All kinds, the sky will fall down and the moon will explode. Bad things could, tip, could potentially happen. So keep that in mind. Um, the wire that I used and the plug-ins for the 110 plugs on this device that I built are only rated for 15 amps. I'm running a welder, a 220 volt welder, built in China. <laughs> so all of the all of the ingredients for something bad to happen, I admit, is probably in place with the use of this device that I built in my situation. I don't know, I mean, the, the welder came with, with uh, a schematic and tells you about the voltages and the wattage and the amperages and all, that, all of that sort of thing. And to my knowledge, from what I've seen or researched, the, uh, the information comes with those Chinese built welders that are super cheap is probably not reliable information. I really honestly have no idea what that welder, it's in a box over here someplace, what what its amp draw is, uh, what its power consumption is. It has 14 gauge wire on the pigtail and that's what I used here on my device, which is rated for 15 amps. So I'm, I assume that the welder does not pull more than 15 amps. It probably, I, I don't know, it may. I haven't been able to measure them and I don't have the equipment to be able to measure that. So it's possible that this wire could become a fuse. This wire can heat up with use and this wire will cause potentially a fire or shock hazard because the wiring in the house that I was using or in the garage is 20, ga uh, 20 amp wire where I'm using a 15 amp wire here. So this becomes a fuse in this scenario. Now I did test it by feel and I never did feel any heat or warmth in these wires when I was using the welder. Does that make it right? Does that make it safe? No. Uh, just so you guys are aware of that if you're thinking about building a device like this. Uh, the, what, a lot of people were asking me, why didn't I just run a regular two-pole breaker and run a 220 or 240 volt 
circuit specifically built for an outlet like this? That's a perfectly legitimate question. Um, and I understand why you would ask that. In my scenario, the sub panel that fed that garage, again, that was a 100 year old garage with ancient, ancient wiring to it. It had only been wired with a, uh, a sub panel box that had room for one double pole breaker. So I could have put in a double pole breaker and ran a legitimate 220 volt outlet to run my welder. I would not have had any other breakers or uh, any other circuits for lighting or for uh, 110 or 120 volt outlets if I had done that. That's why I didn't do that. Well, why didn't you just put in a, a legitimate sub panel box that had four or five or 10, uh, 10 positions in it and run it properly so you had everything, you know, I could put the lights on one circuit, I could put the outlets, 110 outlets on a different circuit, and then I could still run my legitimate 220 circuit. Well, I didn't want to go through the expense. I knew that I was going to be moving from that location. I needed to use my welder or wanted to. I didn't need to. I don't weld for a living. I'm just a hobbyist, okay? Um, but that's the reason. I did fence into it and then move and not, uh, not be able to recoup my costs on that. Now that I'm in a new location, in a new shop, uh, this one does not have a 220 outlet. I'm probably gonna be going through the process of putting a legitimate 220 volt or 240 volt outlet in here so I can run that welder off of it in the near future. So at the moment, my device that I built to temporarily get me through that situation I was in will probably not be used. It'll probably just sit on a shelf or in a box someplace. And I know, go ahead and put it in the comments. Thank God you're not gonna kill anybody or burn your house down because you're not gonna be using it. I, Guys, I didn't make that video to, uh, to hurt anybody. I just put it out there because I thought it was a neat idea. It got me through the pinch and I know there'll be people on the internet, everybody on the internet goes on the internet and thinks that uh, everything they see is, is legitimate. You, you gotta have common sense, and I know common sense is not so common these days, but if you're watching any of my videos, keep in mind, I'm just a hobbyist, I'm just a tinkerer, and I know, uh, Tinkering with electricity is, is dangerous. You guys remind me of that and every other comment, all of the certified electricians that made comments on my video. <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks for pointing out the obvious. I, I appreciate it. And hopefully uh, other people that see that video and see this video will realize that, uh, you know, if you're gonna do something like this, do it at your own risk, do your own research. I mean, if it was, they do, they do sell devices like this. You can go on walmart.com and you can buy a device like this that costs over $300. Um, and there's a few other places on the internet that sell them. They do have, and I mentioned this in my first video, they have built-in safety so that if one leg uh, stops supplying power like the breaker trips on that one, the other one will be shut down as well. Of course, my homemade device does not have that feature. I, I talked about that uh, in detail in my first video. So anyway, I'm not gonna continue to ramble on about this. I do appreciate all the views and the comments and the people that are uh, trying to help keep us all safe out there. I, I don't discourage you from leaving those comments. If you're gonna leave a comment and call me all, all types of names in the book, and then uh, list your resume in the comment because you're a 30, 40 year uh, certified electrician that wired the Empire State Building or something. Uh, if you're calling me names, I probably will just delete the comment. But if it's a legitimate co comment that will help somebody 
uh, which is to me the whole point for my channel, the whole point for the videos that I make, then uh, absolutely put it in the comments. I appreciate them. My viewers, people that watch the video that happens to read the comments appreciates that. And it all helps us learn and grow and keeps us from doing things that are un potentially unsafe. Anyway, thanks for watching the videos, guys. I hope this particular video will help somebody out. If you've got a comment that's going to help somebody, feel free to pop it down in the comment section below. We all appreciate it, and I'll look forward to seeing you guys on the next video.